Honorable Robin Anabanja yesterday to go in tackling what is, of course, an unnerving and an uncomfortable situation in the part of uh, the country. Joining me for this uh, discussion is Honorable Gilbert Olanya, who is on by Extreme Left. A very warm welcome to the show, Honorable Olanya. Thank you so much. We are also joined by uh, Ben Koryang, MP for Dodoth, as well as uh, Faith Nakut, Nakut Women mm -hmm. Member of Parliament for Napak. Lady and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Like I said in our preamble, we come on the backdrop of a crisis of unprecedented proportions in Karamoja. We've had this in the past where famine has been reported, insecurity has been reported. What we have right now is a cocktail of just about everything. Insecurity, cattle rustling back to the fore, claims that the UPDF is also no perhaps uh, mishandling some of the issues, especially when it comes to the youth who have arms, and now the very latest starvation that people are actually dying of hunger. I don't know who goes first to paint us this picture. Please. Mm. I can. Uh -huh. yeah. <coughs> the reality on the ground is that people are really starving and dying. We were in for recess and we visited a number of places in Karamoja. As a Karamoja parliamentary group, mm -hmm. we went to mobilize for, for peace and also to launch the parish model. Yeah. There were all signs that things were really bad. We witnessed some places that had buried people mm -hmm. with the numbers rising every day. And that is really alarming. If it was a normal crisis that usually happens that people are starving but they can eat after a few days, mm. there we would keep quiet. For a fact, the people in Karamoja are very resilient. We are gif gifted with resilience. Mm. Yeah. By the time we come out to speak, you know it is serious. We've registered debts which are more I have been comfortable to announce 46 deaths in Napak, 189 from Kabong, uh, 45 in Boroto. Three Wait a minute. You say yes. you are comfortable yes. to announce. Yes. I would like to distort your comfort zone and tell us the truth. <laughs> the truth. Yeah. The numbers are more than wh what I have declared. That's the truth. Mm. That, that's the truth. Okay. Yes. Honorable Ben Koryang, what's happening in your constituency? It's a mix of uh, problems. And uh, Karenga is a district that is, uh, first of all, in the green belt of Karamoja, just like Napak. Mm. And uh, if it were not for insecurity, then it would be the food basket for the eastern corridor of uh, the Karamoja region, which mm. is somehow dry. And uh, the vegetation cannot allow the rainfalls are erratic and cannot allow them produce enough food. But uh, a cocktail of issues, problems, basically no, number one, insecurity, mm. the upsurge of insecurity and the emergence of uh, cattle rustling made it very difficult for people to produce, to go out to produce food. Whenever they are out to try to till the land, they are killed by the criminals that are looking for cattle. And uh, opening enough acreage of land needed oxen, but because these oxen have been raided, then people have to use oars and open just uh, small areas of <coughs> land. Now, the, uh, recently, just in the last few days, the elephants have come out of the game park and are destroying the crops that are about to mature. Again exacerbating and accelerating the problem situation. yeah making the situation worse so basically the biggest problem is insecurity that made us reach where we are mm. otherwise karamoja people are able to produce food to feed themselves okay. this can be test uh, a testimony from the last 10 years mm. when we, there was relative peace people were producing food and were able to take care of themselves. Those that could not produce food mm. were able to sell mm. their mm. livestock mm. and go and buy from the others. Okay. So it was actually self-sustaining. Honorable Olanya, this is the latest in a series of crises that uh, have uh, 
been reported in Karamoja region. You've uh, lived long <coughs> enough to know the series that have happened before. What is, just compare what has been happening to what is happening now. Yeah, uh, thank you, my brother. Uh, I come from a Chodi sub region, mm. and we are never in Karamoja. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Now, the issue of Karamoja, we need to dig from the history. I remember some 12 to 15 years ago, there were famines in Karamoja. And in between, where there were peace, for the last 10 years, there were no famines. And for the last one year, where insecurity is back, mm. there's famine. Yeah. Now we ask ourselves, what has gone wrong in Karamoja? And what is bringing all this kind of insecurity? I remember the disarmament was mm. done, whereby the government claims that all the guns in Karamoja were collected and they were earning, earning in over voluntarily. Mm. And from nowhere, within the shortest time possible, most of the families were rehamed. I remember when the MPs from Karamoja were presented on the floor of parliament. Mm. So we tried to dig to investigate where are those guns coming from. Most of those bullets that were used in Karamoja, we found that there were they were rec recent kind of bullets that are being manufactured from Dhaka Songkola. Most of the guns were the UPDF guns that were being used by the Karamoja by people. The cattle wrestlers. Exactly. Yeah. So we ask ourselves, who is rehaming the Kara the Karamoja? And where are the guns coming from? So if you look at famine, when there is peace, people were cultivating, mm. people were very busy, and there were no complaints of famine. Now that there is insecurity, people are no longer cultivating. Mm. So government needs to be very serious on this issue of Karamoja. And if you look at the cattle wrestling, I remember when the Karamojans used to raid among themselves, they used to walk on foot, mm. they moved to the neighbors, they raid few cattle and they moved back. But right now, we have the modern kind of raiding in Karamoja, whereby someone raids and they carry it in a big truck. The heads of cattle are carried in the truck, transported very smartly. So, there is something wrong in Karamoja, whereby we need leaders of Karamoja to be very serious. And uh, they need to let the government mm. stand responsible and they should demand what is needed by the Karamoja people. You speak of the fact that uh, cattle wrestling has become more organized than uh, rudimentary. Exactly. In fact, the trucks are being used. Now, yeah. these trucks belong to people. Yeah. Have you been able to see a truck or two and you can say this either belongs to an organization like this one or an agency? Are you able to tell where this, who owns these trucks? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, what is going on currently? We are saying the reading has become modern because not the true Karamoja, not the true, not the true Karamojong mm. who, who are doing that. There are some organized people within the security personnel mm. who are organizing to raise people's animals. After raiding, they carry those animals, they bring them to Kampala and sell. So it's Karamojong on imports, not at the true Karamojong. Now the security personnel mm. who are helping the Karamojong in the raiding. Okay, you, that is a factor that, of course, uh, uh, falls within the docket of the causes of the current crisis. Yes, and exactly. I believe that uh, most of the interventions on, uh, at parliamentary level by re representatives from the region is able to address that particular concern. But let me come to Honorable uh, Koryang. There has been interventions in the past, especially to address hunger. But just like listening to Honorable Lanya, you realize that you cannot address hunger without addressing the security situation and the causes of that security situation. Where are we at this point in terms of uh, getting to put local leaders, the government, including you, the representatives on board, in crafting the best possible solutions? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, of course, one thing is um, sometimes government uh, looks, uh, looks and waits mm. until the problem gets out of hand. Even when signs and alarm bells have been raised in the earliest possible times to allow government plan. Mm. They don't do that. Because um, uh, the, the resurgence of insecurity, actually the cattle rustling, started as early as 2018. Mm. 
and we raised alarm bells and asked government that they should nip the situation in the bud. Let's deal with the, the, the cattle theft mm. before they become escalate to and cattle raids and cause crisis, more crisis. The latest of starvation. They took this like it wasn't something serious and you, you would have had statements like those are isolated incidences mm. uh, we, are, we are on top of the situation the region is calm and then uh, after elections when we had just gotten uh, elected in March we had a meeting with the CDF we were not yet even sworn in we had a meeting with the CDF and the division commander third division and we categorically said we need to deal with this situation before it goes out of hand otherwise we're going to run into more other problems mm. and in that meeting a lot of things were put down that's when we even realized that anger was looming yeah it was coming in because the insecurity has not allowed people to produce food we brought this forward to government mm. and in uh, early 2021 we stated this clearly. We shared a lot of this in many of the meetings we had. We've had about nine high profile meetings. Mm -hmm. In all these meetings, food insecurity was always an issue, an issue alongside the cattle rustling and other insecurity. But government wasn't listening. If they had taken heed then, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be in this situation, probably where people are starving. would have the, the famine but then government will be able to respond mm. until such a point where as we deal with insecurity then we can take people back to produce more food oh, okay like one of my colleagues said yesterday in a meeting we had the problems of karamoja are known even the solutions are known also but know. actions are the ones that are failing okay yes it's yeah. the actions that are not being done that means the will to act to is act not there is the Another one which is not there i would say you yes. are reading so much from yes. the book of lamentations while yeah. yesterday the government opened the book of acts yes. and put a little bit yes. of money yes. to ensure that it goes to uh, restoring uh, relative uh, food security in the region however i would like to ask uh, honorable okay. faith and a quote when it comes to agriculture within the region mm. we have uh, dotted aspects of uh, you know a subsistence of farming we don't see a sustained effort to embark on agriculture that is transformative mm. so much so that i think everyone is able to do simple cultivation and now that this particular intervention is coming for how is it going to help or in case it doesn't what must be done because you are on the ground and you know the agricultural practices that mm. are sustainable in the region the potential for Karamoja to grow its food cannot be underestimated mm. and also to keep animals, livestock for the welfare of the people. Yeah. That one is guaranteed. Mm. In terms of the intervention, the 135 billion allocated by cabinet that the, the Prime Minister announced mm. is strictly going for food. 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 Food relief. In food fact. relief yeah. for, for the people who are vulnerable mm. for three months. The other money that we need for f to prepare for in the medium term and in the long term mm. is not there yet. That money does not exist right now. Mm. We need, there are many things that we need yeah. to do. For example, in the mid in medium term, we need to be able to open up as many fields as we can. Mm. You cannot open up those fields with hand holes. You need a tractor to do that mm. so that you have food, for the families and also food to sell. Mm. So we, we need to open up, we need agricultural advisory services to operate in the entire region of Karamoja. By the way, every part of Karamoja can produce food mm. that has been tested. Okay. There's no part that cannot. So we need no, not only to rely on rain, which we are not able to even forecast adequately that there will be rain at such a time. The meteorology department has not done justice to the, to the Karamoja region to prepare farmers in advance that there will be rain for this much grow. Mm. So that many times they have made a loss. Okay. We need to invest in irrigation. I'm telling you, I can't even remember any irrigation scheme operating at the moment in the entire sub-region. If it is there, I am not aware. So we need irrigation schemes to take care of seasons when the, when the rain disappears. All right. Maybe, That's maybe ju just to... Uh, very quickly, to, to yeah, have a burning quickly. question for Honorable... Uh, actually, uh, you asked about if there are efforts to yeah. do transformational agriculture. Mm. Those are there. Like I said earlier, there are parts of Karamoja that are green belts. Yes. Yeah. Namalu produces rice mm. and sells. 
produces beans, produces maize. There are farmers who actually produce in not less than 100 acres yeah. in some parts of the Karamoja region, but that has been hampered by insecurity. Mm. So they cannot again go out and do that cultivation, produce more food. Otherwise, the mindset is, is already there in Karamoja that we need to produce more than just to feed ourselves. Mm. We need to look at now the cash economy. Very shortly you'll, telling, you'll be telling us exactly what the problem now is. You seem to understand that everything is in place, the system can work, mm -hmm. but you know where the problem is yeah. and perhaps what is not being moved under the pipeline. You'll be telling us that. But yeah. I have a burning one for you. You look at uh, Karamoja from outside the frame of this particular picture, being an MP from this other region. We do not hear reports as extreme as we hear from Karamoja, from these other regions. What are you doing right that can be taken and perhaps adopted by Karamoja region? Uh, In terms of food security, uh, rollout of uh, uh, social economic uh, policy, what can be done that for example, in Acholi region, it's perhaps working, especially in light of the fact that the region is being transformed despite the fact that it suffered over two decades of war. Yeah, uh, it, it should be noted mm. that recently the president announced that we are now in the middle income economy. <laughs> <laughs> so <All right. laughs> so that one day we ask mm. himself or herself, we are now in the middle income economy and people are still dying of famine. Mm. or starvation. So what should be done now, the most important thing which is key is the security matters. The government should address security matters squarely. I remember when they were in security in a Chile sub-region, mm. you remember during the LRA war, we were not cultivating, people were running up and down, government were distributing food the same way they planned to give in Karamoja. But the food distribution is not sustainable. Mm. It's very difficult to sustain. Yeah. And m more so, the MPs from Karamaja told us from Parliament that they were giving a kilogram oh of beans. beans to a family and three kilograms of portion to a family. And a kilogram and three kilogram may be eaten in less than two days. It means if they distribute food now... A kilogram of beans is eaten in one... Exactly, in one city. In a meal. No, but you, in but you, you eat sparingly. Okay, that's exactly. that's you that's eat sparingly. Exactly. And, and if you look at this amount of money yeah. announced by the Prime Minister, 135 billion, I don't think. You know, as a country, mm. we have a problem in implementation. Okay. They may announce a huge figure, but the money which will reach Karamoja mm. will be less than, less than 2 billion. You know, we have corrupt people everywhere and then secondly we need to cultivate the Karamoja leaders right from NC1 up mm. to members of parliament yeah. they need to mobilize their people let them learn how to cultivate and you, you know what I know with Karamoja most of their life span is based on animals mm. so they, they look at outside of animals exactly they, they, they look at grazing yeah. as the only source of livelihood which is not just that point it's a very poignant one when you say the lifestyle is based on that the parish development model seeks to take uh, a stock of the advantages of any one particular community and what it does best mm. and be able to craft a market for that particular don't you think as it is being rolled out the parish development model can be one that can address such a concern yeah that is true. that's why i'm saying let the leaders from nc1 up to members of parliament let them identify what is good for their community. Mm. Because we may take their Paris development model, we may sink huge amount of money, and, and you know, you, you not see the income. Mm. So let them identify the what can be done best for the people of Karamoja. Chris. Okay, very quickly. <coughs> There's something itching? Uh -huh. Yes. I don't want us to paint a picture that uh, the livestock keeping is responsible uh, yeah, for I what happens. I was about to break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going just made uh, an allegation, <laughs> perhaps a misrepresentation. <laughs> that yes. is a misrepresentation. Ah, there you have it. Yes. Okay. The, uh, people keep their livestock because it's the only sure way you can guarantee mm. your asset base mm. is protected. Mm. Because when you are relying on nature to, to help you grow the food that you need. Mm. And there are seasons, I've told you, when it fails, when yeah. nature fails you, right. at least you have your cow to sell. 
So as much as we should encourage a lot of crop production, we should also provide for veterinary services everything to do with the health care of the livestock. Mm. The, the entire livelihood options should be supported. Before we went to Honorable Lanya, you seemed to know where the real problem is. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, the, the problems of Kamoja are known. Insecurity is there as a major Who problem. Who is failing what? Now, your national by, by, by by yes, that yeah. is true. The constitution is very clear. Mm -hmm. There is a, an article that establishes the UPDF, mm. and the mandate of the UPDF is to protect the properties of the people, and the lives of the, the, lives people, of the people, including securing territorial sovereignty and integrity of the country. Mm. Like uh, Gilbert said, the, the, the arms that are causing insecurity in Karmoja, where are they mm. coming from? I, I just want to add that uh, alongside those guns that are allowed to come from Nagashongola, a majority of these guns are coming from South Sudan mm. and Kenya. Kenya. People go out there. The reason these people went and rearmed was after the last disarmament, there was peace for 10 years. Mm. But Kenya did not disarm. South Sudan did not disarm. Mm. Now, they were when the, the, the insecurity returned in 2018, mm. it was out of alliances between the South Sudan tribes in the Karmojong yeah. and the Turkana and the Karmojong. In that mix, there were guns coming in. Yeah. That is where government failed and the UPD failed. Because if they had made sure no guns come back into the country, then yeah. would not have insecurity. Okay. So that was a failure on that side. Wow. Now, coming back to other government agencies and ministries, we know very well that, uh, like I said, parts of Karmoja produce food yeah. Yeah. and they can be able to sustain and feed themselves. When the first lady was minister for Karamoja, she started programs uh, that were dubbed Karamoja Feeds. Karamoja. Karamoja Feeds. Karamoja, yes. Mm. Namalu Prisons was producing food that WFP would buy and distribute in schools. Yeah. Yeah. And the people were producing enough food for themselves. Those that would not produce because maybe they have taken into livestock would sell the livestock and buy food from the others. So there was self sustenance within mm. the community. That is where we expected government to actually take borrow a lever and say, okay, these people can do this. We need now to help in making sure we scale up the production mm. so that people can be able to produce their food, their own food. That's where you had uh, Honorable Faye said, we needed to look at issues of now providing, mechanizing agriculture, for example, so that people can be able to open mm. more acreage. Look at high value crops, Mm. that can work in which areas. Karenga produces sunflower. Mm. Uh, about 30% of the sunflower that is milled mm. in the lira pr to produce cooking oil by Ma Mukwano and uh, Ngeta Tropical Holdings is coming from Karenga. Mm. As leaders, actually this year, we mobilize people to produce sunflower. Okay. Personally, I've done 300 acres. Mm. There are people who have 20, 30, 40 like that because we're looking at it as a uh, comparative advantage. Oh. Now, the other advantage with sunflower is the elephants don't, don't eat it. browse on it. You see that? So we looked at what we could do very well. Yeah. So those are yeah. avenues where we want government. Can to you craft that blueprint, have it in a very concrete form uh, so that it can be shared sufficiently to all stakeholders? I'll be coming to you on the plight of women and children mm. in this whole crisis and what interventions are in place mm. to ensure that they are taken care of. But let me first go to what could be is a wrap or from you <laughs> nodding disease starvation mm -hmm. hunger the crisis within the country mm -hmm. how should we address this problem yeah uh, thank you so much you very know, quickly currently we have serious problem and the famine we are talking about what i foresee it may not be only in karamoja this time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because if you look at the northern part of uganda this period used to be our best raining time. Now there's no rain, crops are drying off. It means in three to four months to come, government needs to plan ahead to help people across the country mm. as far as food supply is concerned. Talk of Nodding Syndrome. You know, the, 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 the issue of Nodding Syndrome, we have failed to understand as members of parliament who come from actually. 
right. uh, because when we talk to government, yes. right now we still don't know the root cause. But children, those are who contracted nodding syndrome, they have never mm. improved, and many of them are just dying. It means the whole of that generation is now gone. That's why we are calling for government to be very serious. And more so with this famine, mm. nodding syndrome needs enough food. So it means we are foreseeing a terrible problem coming up. Mm. So government need to plan ahead since we are, we are, we are, we are, we are heading to the worst time. And finally, there, there's a notion, as, as my sister said, you know, there's a notion by Karamoja that all animals belong to Karamoja. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the clear thing. <laughs> wherever, wherever they move, that's why that's why my concern is. Mm -hmm. You know, currently we need to shift from that notion. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because it is true. In the past, Karamoja used to keep animals. Mm -hmm. Right now, there is some part of Karamoja that can grow food crops. Yes. Yeah. So let let there be mapping. Okay. The area that can that perform does, well uh -huh. in food crop. Let them be there. All right, gentlemen, allow me, allow the lady to wrap this up by telling us the plight of women, what interventions are in place, children and women. The, ch the women are a little resilient, mm -hmm. but the children are dying in their big numbers, unfortunately. Also, the cu our culture okay. puts the burden of welfare what on women. What are you doing? What we are MP doing. MP Napak for I'm women. I'm doing my job of telling you to uh -huh. support me in, in mobilizing All resources right. for the We've women and children. <laughs> I've just done that by amplifying these particular <laughs> messages yeah. and of course uh, the situation of the crisis in uh, Karamoja. Many thanks, Honorable Gilbert Olanya for making time. Uh, thanks to Honorable Ben Koryang and of course uh, Faith uh, Nakut, MP for Napak Women for amplifying uh, the situation in Karamoja. We do hope the discussion can help in shaping policy, but most importantly, providing the much needed information for many of uh, the interventions. Now